These new lamps, capable of producing four times as much light from the same amount of electricity, use one of today's booming technologies, electroluminescent diodes, or LEDs. By 2020, it is estimated that LEDs will cover 70% of the world's lighting needs. They are now starting to be used in food production. If their benefits are proven, they could be a key solution in the construction of vertical farms. At the University of Van Genang in the Netherlands, Professor Tom Dweck is one of the pioneers of this new research into LEDs. LEDs is a system, a light system that's been used for quite some time. We see it most often in your house, uh, in car lights, in billboard lights, and the last number of years we've been seeing it more frequently in greenhouses as well to light plants. That's because LEDs are much more efficient than, uh, than the conventional high pressure sodium lights and also because you can place them anywhere in your greenhouse. You can place them right close to your plant, which you cannot with another type of light that uh, gives a lot more heat and would burn your plant, essentially. Unlike traditional lighting solutions, LEDs can be fine-tuned in terms of the intensity and color of light touching each leaf. Three years ago, the use of LEDs was still experimental, but now they are starting to seduce innovative growers like Mark Dillison in the south of Holland, who has seen the rhythm of his seasons turned on its head. Normally, uh, springtime is the fast-growing period of the year, uh, from seeding till, uh, till uh, that the pl lettuce plant is something like this big, seven, 10 centimeters. Uh, normally, that's 30 days. In winter time, outside, uh, with, when there's not, a, not much light and the days are really short, to get a plant that is 10 centimeters high takes 100 days. Within the LED rooms, we have cut that back, similar to springtime. So, in a way, we have always spring in the LED rooms. Imagine you in springtime in the sun, uh, you're feeling happy, that's the same with the plant. It took us four years to build an LED room with seven stories, uh, starting from scratch. We had to do a, a lot of research, so that was quite a big challenge. Uh, in total, in the four cells that we have, on an average, it's around one million plants that are in here. With Christmas, we had a lot of sales and uh, we just turn a bit on the, on the, on the buttons for uh, higher temperature or longer light. Thanks to LEDs, you can now change season at the touch of a button. Perhaps soon, we'll be able to use this technology to grow any plant anywhere around the world. The idea is now being taken very seriously. At the German Space Agency in Bremen, Daniel Schubert has developed a model for a vertical farm. To him, the rapid progress made in the field of LEDs is finally allowing people to imagine turning theory into practice. We wanted to design a production building that could be constructed in a megalopolis such as Beijing, Tokyo or New York in order to grow food. Our vertical farm produces 13 tons of fresh food every day, which is sold in the supermarket. Until now, the cost of LED lighting has been prohibitive. If you look at the price of LEDs over the last few years, it was practically unimaginable to light big plantations that way. But since LEDs have become much less expensive, it is now possible to use them on a big scale in a vertical farm. In practice, we are experiencing the same evolutions as seen with computer processors or chips that become faster and more efficient every year. Paradoxically, the most important technical solution for vertical farms has come from the flattest land in the world, the Netherlands. In the greenhouses of Rotterdam, new artificial suns are already starting to rise. The LED lamp that you here see, the hang fast on the The LEDs you see here are tied up at this height. One row is placed at a meter 90, and the next one 50 centimeters above. The plant keeps growing two or three meters. And the lamps are here, inside the plant. 
Met de LED licht kunnen we meer drossen oogsten. With LED lighting, we get more plants per meter and thus more tomatoes. This gives us better yields, but also lower costs. Onze productie gaat daardoor met de our production is 20 to 25 percent greater, 25 percent more than with a traditional lighting system. These results are already spectacular, but for researchers, this is just the beginning, because the ability to control light is opening up a raft of new opportunities to agronomists. We use uh, different colors of, uh, of light, and we try and, and uh, our research is directed to making a light recipe to see which of the light combinations in space and time are the most effective for growing the plants in the way we need that. Um, for example, blue light will basically keep your plant shorter. Red light will make the most amount, most uh, uh, profit from the energy you put into it. And far red light will also affect the, the, the uh, growth, the elongation, the, the length of your plant, among other things. Uh, different combinations can also influence the time of flowering, uh, the size of, the, of, your, of your leaves or fruits. Those are things we play around with to find the best uh, light recipe to make our uh, crops grow the way we want them to. A clever little cook-up to create a kind of ideal sunshine, a made-to-measure internal sunshine. Pink light is made because uh, the light colors that are usually used with LEDs are a red, and a, a smaller portion of blue, and they're combined to make pink light. Pink light in a greenhouse is, uh, is a nice, it's almost a disco light. We haven't envisaged things being this way, but perhaps the farms of the future will indeed resemble giant discotheques. But what kinds of food are being produced by these disco farms that look like UFOs? Encouraged by their initial success, scientists are continuing their research, and their objective right now is to create the perfect fruit and the ultimate plant. Now, a lot of people think, or might think, that a healthy tomato will only grow in the sunlight, outdoors, in the ground. Well, that's not the case. Uh, if you know the kind of nutrient the, the tomato outside gets, we can supply that inside. You have a, a nicer climate for the plant and we can grow it year round. So we can grow a very healthy, uh, well-producing plant indoors just as well and even better than outdoors. By regulating the light spectrum, we can precisely define the flavor of the plant, the flavor of the vegetable or that of the fruit. For example, we are able to make a Dutch tomato, but also one from a garden in southern Italy. Could a pink LED-based sun give as much flavor to the fruit as real Italian sunshine? For consumers, it's still a little hard to swallow, except that for Dutch producers, terroir is no longer really an issue. All our tomatoes are exported to Italy. 90 to 95 percent of our tomatoes go to that country. Doing better than Mother Nature? Creating fruit to one's own standards and in infinite quantities that previously one was happy to gather from the tree or the branch? Has modern science really outstripped the imaginations of science fiction authors? Not quite, because for now nothing has completely replaced natural light. Even the most modern greenhouses use as much natural sunshine as possible, and LEDs only supply a useful addition at certain times or during certain seasons.